Do you have a consumer-related problem? Find your answers on Speak Out. All eight working days should speak out, sort it out the problem. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Thursdays. on PM Live weekdays from 4 to 6. 6. SAFM, 104 to 107 nationwide. South Africa's news and information leader. leader. Otherwise, on SAFM. It is indeed otherwise talking women here on SAFM when we're moving from the heat of Mozambique to the chill of an ice swim. Well, an ice swim, in case you're wondering what on earth that is, is one that has to be done in water that's less than 5 degrees centigrade or over a mile. I think I've got that right. Well, why should you want to do such a thing? I have absolutely no idea. But to tell us, we have Cecilia Scooter. She's the first South African woman to swim an ice mile and uh, also to be accepted into the International Ice Swimming Association. All about it. Cecilia, lovely to have you with us. And you look way too tanned and healthy to be (laughs) swimming around in freezing cold water. (laughs) um, So ice swimming, it's obviously it's a recognized style of swimming. Has it been going long? Tell us a little bit about it. No, it's actually a pretty new sport, if you want to call that. Mm. Um, It's actually more marathon swimming and cold water swimming has been recognized more as a sport, um, with the 10K being as part of an Olympic um, sort of entrance. Um, ice swimming is very new um, it's only been mainly a, a man's a sort of domain so we've had like a Lewis Pugh swimming you know in Arctica or in the North Pole and recently Ram Barke has been uh, doing some ice swims um, so it's definitely not a woman's domain up till now well absolutely not I was going to say you know a human polar bear Lewis Gordon Pugh is on <laughs> everybody's lips you know and I, and I think for his swim he actually had to put on quite a lot of weight so he could get yes. covered and tolerate this but from what I understand a lot of his uh, was in the head yes so, so if the guys can do it the girls can do it too. Totally. I think a woman has an added advantage of being just a woman. I think it's also known amongst just uh, the general population, you know, that we can kind of handle more than one thing at a time. And I think we have an added advantage in that sense. Um, Not that I'm a woman's lib um, pusher or anything like that, but it definitely is. I mean, I could probably go as far as to say like um, 90% of it is definitely mind over matter. Yeah. That's for sure. Women's lib, that's such a lovely old-fashioned expression. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So so tell us about your swim. When we say that it's in water that's in less degrees, uh, less than 5 degrees centigrade, it has to be over a mile. Mm. Where do you swim? I mean, going back to Lewis Gordon, and Pugh, he swam in, you know, Arctic conditions over halfway up Everest. Where do you swim? Or do you just fill a pool in, with ice? Well, in this case, this was in Fraserburg, uh, Niva Dam, or Niva Dam, and this is just next to Sutherland, which is the coldest um, Africa. Um, that's pretty much as local as it gets. Um, the rest is usually either glacier swims in Norway or Antarctica or the Arctic. Um, those are one of the, or Everest, as Lewis has done. Um, those are one of the choice mm. places. Mm. Which makes it quite hard to uh, practice, to train. Yes. Where, where, where do you train? Um, mainly outdoors. Actually, um, only outdoors. Mm. I've been doing um, outdoor training all year round. Um, there's no point really to train indoors if you need to acclimatize the cold. Um, and the, the lowest it probably gets to is probably about 9 or 10 degrees. Okay, um, so it's not quite cold enough, but I mean, that, no. I suppose that'll do for training purposes. Exactly. And in terms of bulking up, or, or, you know, having sort of your own personal layers, mm. oh, just going back to the, the niceties of ice swimming, do you, mm. it, does it, do you have to be wearing anything in particular? I think, Gordon, if you wore just a Speedo, do you have to wear... Well, yeah, um, the requirements are just your Speedo swimwear, which is just your costume or bather, um, your cap and your goggles, um, along with like with the swim we did was a, um, a Speedo Africa ice swim, and they actually endorsed that, which is the first one of its kind, you know, in our country as an official ice swim. Mm. It seems so strange that a, an African woman should be <laughs> doing this, you know. Um, somehow one imagines perhaps Russia or somewhere sort of really yeah. chilly. But why did you get into it? Was it was it a challenge? I mean, have you always been a swimmer? I've always been a swimmer. I've been out of it for about 15 years um, since school. And only in the last two and a half years I've been training on and off. I'm actually more interested in marathon swimming, which is 10Ks and up. Um, but certainly in the last two months I've been getting more serious with the training. And um, I don't know, I just seem to have an ability to handle the cold um, in a very unique way. And it's definitely a challenge to the body. And sort of my mission with this is to... 
um, encourage women to push their boundaries um, or limits, whether, whether it is emotional, um, the mind, in life, in work. And hopefully with this, I can sort of um, encourage them to, do, mm. to push their own limits. And tell me about your mind when you get into that freezing <laughs> cold water. Are you thinking, why am I doing this? What, what do you do to prepare yourself so that you are able to do it? Because for a lot of people, this would be impossible, mm. possibly dangerous. It is definitely dangerous. You uh, should have a very good medical team back up in case something happens. Um, but the mindset, I usually... I don't think I do it on purpose, but it is kind of like my way of handling it. Um, I dream about it. I think about it. I visualize myself in that water and how I'm going to breathe and how I'm going to stroke through it. Um, and it's kind of like a lot of mental preparation in that sense and a bit of a um, little bit of craziness thrown into that and a little bit of, um, you know, you can do it sort of. No matter what, you'll push it, even yeah. if you feel your hands are going to... From the Olympics, there, is it an Olympic discipline? Is it, is it one of those... Sports? Not ice swimming. Yeah. Um, the 10K swim is an Olympic discipline, um, which is great because we have a lot of ability with regards to marathon swimming in this country and overseas. So it's actually just opened the door to pretty much anyone that can do it. One of the things about swimming uh, that, you know, so very often we've heard that there are certain times a month when a woman doesn't swim and yes. all those sort of <laughs> things. How do you deal with all that? I mean, uh, you, hormonally and, you know, in terms of your cycle, do you handle it okay? Are you doing yourself any harm? Um, I definitely had that consideration with regards to ocean swimming, <laughs> you know, sharks and all that. Yeah. But um, luckily to contraception and um, the pull and that kind of thing, you can regulate it. Yeah. You can decide when you have your um, monthly or not. And um, your Isn't schedule is a wonderful thing. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> and you get the injection, which also you can go on. And, you know, it, it regulates everything for me. So it actually I don't have a problem when it comes to that. Um, but otherwise, if people choose to do it naturally, then obviously that's up to them. Ocean swims, I would not recommend that time of the month. Yes, no, absolutely. <laughs> Let's not go any further there. It's really <laughs> scary. What, um, what's next? When do you, when's your next big ice swim? <clears throat> I'm not quite marketing that right at this moment. Okay. But as soon as I have some sponsors in the bag, I'll start marketing it quite seriously. When you say marketing it, is it a fundraising thing? Um, it an definitely. Thing? It will be an awareness thing and hopefully a fundraising thing. I'm very much into youth activities. I have my own youth organization um, I'm definitely my passion is to um, handle the social um, economic or development situation with the youth in the townships and so on we run a lot of um, programs there so with this I'm hoping to get some sponsorships for those programs the youth organization does it focus on swimming or is that a, a side issue that's a side issue the swimming is my vehicle in um, being able to pull in sponsorships for those kind of activities it's very difficult in this country also to get sponsorship for these kinds of things because this is so much we have to handle you know you would have heard us talking to Mariana there from mm. Mozambique about the okay. challenges that uh, young women are facing up there working with youth as you do challenges for young women you say you're really keen to get them fired up and, and achieving things what do you see as the biggest setback um, definitely education as to moral codes and um, what I like I say I, I do some work in Danun um, the projects down there and what we run into is like you try and put a drug program in but the underlying issue is actually moral code and you can't tell someone what's right and wrong when they don't really know what's right and wrong. So how can you tell someone not to take drugs? And who's right and who's and wrong? And who's wrong? Yeah. And for them, stealing is survival. That puts food on the table. Why is that wrong? So these are the things that actually on an educational level needs to be handled. And they, they are um, very effective programs for these that have been used internationally, which I'm hoping to get into South Africa. You know, just giving food is not a handling to them. There's a, there has to be an educational backup behind handling the food issue and so on. Topic for another day, Cecilia. Yes, I hope we sure. get you back again <laughs> one more time. Cecilia Scutter, she is a swimmer and social mover, as you heard there. She's also an ice swimmer, the first South African woman to swim an ice mile and to be accepted into the International Ice Swimming Association, which I have to say gets my vote. Well done. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. You're listening to Otherwise just after half past one. In a minute, we're going to be talking about the Out in Africa Film Festival, so do stay with us for that. But right now, 1.31, time for the news headlines with Utsili. With the Gauteng tolling system, it says it has done its best to be as fair as possible to everyone. The South African government says it's considering tough laws to ensure that the code of conduct for local companies with investments on the African continent is strictly regulated. 
and it's do you have a